Let me live out my girlish fantasies, man. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Touch my... <laughs> hey, hey. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome back to the test table with me, Carl. And me, Connor. And that's Connor. And Hi. today, we're doing something a little different. Again. Again. Uh, so what we've decided to do today is we're going to do a quiz. So you play the Pokemon trading card game. I do. Yeah, and I play Yu-Gi-Oh. And so what I'm you going do. to do, I do. You do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you 12 <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and you're going to have to guess if they are good or if they are bad. There is no in-between, there is no like, this is a kind of a good card, kind of a bad card. Baby dragon? No, there's no baby dragon on the oh. list, I'm sorry. Baby. So are you ready to begin? Yes. All right, so this is Carl's cool ass Yu-Gi-Oh quiz uh, by I Carl. It's very cool ass yeah. by Carl. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, so here's your first card. Okay. It's a classic, it's Monster Reborn, right? All right. Target one monster in either player's graveyard and you special summon it. Super simple, basic effect. In either players? What do you think, good, bad? Um, well, can maybe. I ask more questions about this card? Sure, you can ask questions. So when I, when it says, tar stop <laughs> touching my nipples. <laughs> so when the card, like when it says either players, yeah. if you if you special summon that mm -hmm. from your opponent's graveyard, does it go on their field or yours? It goes onto your field. I feel it's a card. that's kind of good. Do you think it's a good card or do you think it's a bad card? I think it's a good card. You're right. Monster Reborn is a very good card. Oh my gosh. It basically goes in everybody's deck. It's all, it's limited to one copy per deck. So you can only play one copy because it's so good. Huh. Yeah. Because it's it's basically a free special summon. That's pretty cool. All right. Ready for the next one? Yeah. Number two. Pot of Desires. I was originally going to put Pot of Greed on here, but I thought that was a bit too easy. You always talk about Pot of Greed. Yeah, so this one is uh, Pot of Desires. Uh, you banish 10 cards from the top of your deck face down. So you can never get them back ever but you get to draw two cards. Whoa! It's only once per turn though. You can only activate one copy of Pot of Desires per turn. Now, remember, Yu-Gi-Oh! is only a 40 card deck. Oh, that's a card. So if you draw five cards for your opening hand, you're down to 35, right? Mm -hmm. Draw for your turn, then you activate this, banish 10, okay? You're like 26 You're already. at 24 cards. 24. And then you draw two, so you go down to 22. So basically, I just do this to cut my deck by half. But you can never get the face down cards back ever again. Yeah. So what do you think? Bad, good? It's terrible. This is actually a really good card. Why is it this good? This card is limited right now. Why? Because it lets you draw two cards. Drawing two cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! is basically like Jesus. <laughs> God? <laughs> is that you, God? Yes, yeah, so yeah. it is I, Pot of Desire. you get to... Because here's the thing. Players rationalize banishing 10 cards from the top of their deck face down because most people play, you know, because three of is a playset in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? So let's say even if you banish down like one of each of your good cards, you could still draw the two cards that you need to get your combo going. And most decks uh, can combo hard enough with minimal pieces that banishing 10 cards really doesn't matter that much. Huh. Yeah, kind of crazy, isn't it? All right, number three, you ready? Yes. Number three, Skellingle. Uh, it's a two drop monster. You flip it and you get to draw one card. Its attack is 900, its defense is 400. Now, it also will activate when it gets attacked. So if somebody, if you lay it down on the, the field, right, and somebody tries to attack it, yeah. you flip it up and you get to activate the effect to draw a card. It's only two? Yeah, so you don't have to sacrifice anything to play it. You just set it down, face down. And end my turn. Yeah, and then next turn you flip it or if they attack you. I mean, that sounds good to me. The card's actually terrible. Why? Because it's really slow. Mm. As a general rule of thumb, in Yu-Gi-Oh, flip monsters are kind of bad because number one, it's probably not gonna survive long enough to actually get that effect off. And number two, drawing one card off of a single monster off of your normal summon is not that good. No? No. Mm. So right now you're at one out of three, but that's okay. I think there's a couple in here that you're, you're gonna get. You got this. I believe in you. you got this. <laughs> Stop <laughs> touching me. <laughs> Are you ready for number four, sweetie? Yeah. All right, number four. This is Cyberstein. Uh, so this is a that's two, cool. This is a two-drop monster, 700 attack, 500 defense, but its effect, you pay 5,000 life points. Special summon one fusion monster from your extra deck in attack position. Mind you, you have 8,000 life points to start out in Yu-Gi-Oh. So I go down. So this to is 3, more 000. than half. You go to 3,000. Yeah. 
That's terrible. This is actually a really good no. card. Yeah, it no. is. Because, I'll tell you why, because a lot of decks, they don't care about the life, they don't care about life point. The, the only life point that matters in Yu-Gi-Oh! is your last one, right? So what they'll do is they'll play this card, they'll pay the 5,000 life points, special out any monster they want, and then they get to combo that fusion monster into basically whatever they need to make. This card was actually banned for a while, and it might still actually be banned. Also, it's not a once per turn. So let's say you have 15,000 life points, you could do this two times. All right, so you're one for four. That's a failing grade, we're at 25% right now. Okay. But that's okay, all right, you ready for the next one? All right, see, you're gonna get to do this with the uh, with Pokemon yeah. here in the future, yeah. Oh. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, number five. This has got to want, this one's got a lot of text, and this is also the point when I was making the slideshow that I realized I could just copy and paste everything from Yugipedia, uh, so I didn't have to type out the effects. What's a ritual summon? Rituals, Do I have to dance? No, ritual summon, you have to activate a card. So don't worry about the ritual summon effect, just read the second effect. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects, also it cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict double piercing battle damage. Piercing battle damage is like trample. Oh. So imagine trampling twice. That's what this card does. That's really good. This is Blue Eyes Chaos Max. This right is here. a really good card. This card is actually horrible. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> the reason this card isn't very good anymore is because there are cards called Kaijus, and the Kaijus let you tribute one of your opponent's monster. Like Godzilla? Basically, yeah. And then give them a Kaiju in its place. So somebody could spend a lot of resources turboing out Chaos Max Dragon, mm -hmm. and then on the second player's turn, they could just drop a Kaiju on it, and all that work is for nothing. Yeah. Okay, there you it go. It was hurting my neck a little Sorry, sorry. So you could at least still get a 50%. <laughs> okay. You feeling okay? All right, next card. I'm going, I'm going for 50. <laughs> You're going for 50%. You gotta get the next one. I gotta get the next one. Gotta get the next one. Number six. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon. So how Xyz monsters work is you have to make them by putting two monsters together, right? You those, lock them in a room? Basically, yeah. <laughs> okay. So those monsters become the materials for that card. Oh, yeah. They're, so, they're, not, they're, they're, they're a thing. They're not just like things, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. They, they become things. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so you have to detach both of its materials, right? Okay. But then you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, its attack becomes half of its current attack, so if it was a blue-eyes white dragon that you're targeting, right? Its attack is going to go from 3,000 to 1,500, and then if it does, this card will gain that 1,500 attack hmm. for the turn. What do you Gains think about this for the turn. Yeah, so let's say your opponent has a monster that's got 2,000 attack, this guy's only got 2,500. Is that only for that turn, though? That's only for that turn. What are you thinking about Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon? And you have to sacrifice two creatures for You don't this? have to sacrifice two creatures, but you have to use both of its materials. You have to mingle them. You have to use both of its materials that you use to mate it. One... Mate it to make it. Two level four monsters. Correct. So I need two to make this. Yeah. But what if this dies? Do the other two die? Yes. It's bad. You're right! Hey! But not for your reasoning. Why? This card is bad because attack points also don't really matter in Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. Why? Because... Monsters now have are so overpowered Tell me, Papa. that they normally have effects <laughs> that are going to destroy your opponent's monsters or like take their attack down or like render them like kind of useless before you actually go into attack. Hmm. So attack points really don't matter until you start getting into like crazy high attack points like 4,000, 5,000. That's when attack points really start to matter. Bull. All right, so you got that one right. You're two for six. There's still a chance. Uh, chance. All right, you ready for number seven? <laughs> yes. Sir. All right, number seven. It's Karibo! He's amazing. Love him. This... Everything about him. His hair, his nails, his eyes, his one star. Well, yeah, of course Karibo himself is amazing, yeah. right? But is his card amazing? Uh, it, it, it's very appealing. It's... So, hold on, let me, let me read the effect. Okay. During damage calculation, if your opponent uh, opponent's monster attacks, quick effect, which means you can activate it at any time, it's like an instant, uh, you can discard this card and then you take no battle damage from that battle. What do you think? Good? Bad? From your hand. You have to discard him from your hand, yes. That's not, not pretty good. Um. <laughs> you want to reconsider? <laughs> Why? Because, all right, all right, here, here's my thought. All right, you have yeah, a place yeah. it of this, which is four. No, it's three. Three, which three is three. Yeah. All right, and then from there, you can just ha keep them in your hands, right? What happens if your opponent has, like, three monsters on the field? You're f***ed. 
Yeah, exactly. Because he only stops one monster from attacking. Oh, one monster. Yeah, yeah, I not not read. all the monsters, just thought, one monster. I thought it was like, you don't take battle damage this turn. No, 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 just one monster from attacking. All right, uh... You think he's good or bad? We, we already know Karibo himself is amazing. He's, he's lovely. He's, he's fantastic. I love him. He's, he has, he's got them Pac-Man eyes. <laughs> yeah, he does, actually. Yeah, he does. He's got them hardcore. They do look like I'll, little Pac-Man But I guess we'll say bad. He is bad. Why is he bad? He's bad because Oops. of what I already told you. He can only stop one monster from attacking one time, right? So if your opponent has three monsters on the field, and let's say each one has like 3,000 attack, you're still probably f***ed, even if you can stop one of those attacks. Yeah. Why do you keep doing that? Doing what? <laughs> You're so cute when you talk about the things you're interested in. Yeah. 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 All right, you ready for number eight? Yeah. Okay, number eight. Goddess this is of the Sweet Revenge. Revenge. Yes. Yeah, so this, is, this card is called Goddess of Sweet Revenge. While you control no cards, and this is the only card you have in your hand, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can discard this card, destroy as many cards as possible uh, that your opponent controls, then you can special special summon one monster from your opponent's or from your deck. So it's a field wipe, and you get to special summon one card from your deck. That's pretty good. It's not. No, this card is actually kind of terrible. Why? Oh, because you have to special summon this. No, 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 no. So when you control no cards and this is the only card in your hand. Oh, you have to have no cards in your hand. Yeah, exactly. You never want to have no cards in your hand in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's okay, we can still get like a 56%. <laughs> what are we right now? We're like three and eight? Three and eight? Four and eight? We'll go back, I'll have the tally. <clears throat> you ready for the next one? Yeah. All right, here comes number nine. All right, so number nine. Yeah. This is Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. So this is a card that is a uh, three-star monster, has zero attack, 1800 defense, but uh, its effect is when a card or effect is activated that includes any of these following effects, hmm. quick effect, right? So instant, okay? Yes. You can discard this card to negate that effect. Those effects are, so if my opponent were to say, add a card from deck to the hand, you could, negate, you could discard this card, negate that effect. Wow. Special summon from the deck, discard this card, negate that effect. Send a card from the deck to the graveyard, you could discard this card to negate that effect. That sounds very good for Paul. But you can only use her once per turn. That doesn't sound very good for Paul. What do you think? It's kind of bad, but good at the same time. You think? <laughs> Papa! <laughs> what is it, my son? <laughs> You're supposed to have the deeper voice, Papa. Uh, no, I, I believe we wouldn't. <laughs> we should talk the same. Yes. <laughs> Papa. It runs in the family. Special summoning from the deck and negating, that's quite nice, Papa. That is quite nice. So It's very you, nice. What do you think? I'm just like, hey, I got this big boy. <laughs> you think this is a good card? It sounds okay-ish. It sounds okay-ish? It sounds okay-ish, but uh, look, send a card from the deck to the graveyard. Right. Is it a card but, I mean, of my choice? <clears throat> well, the thing is, no, no, no. This, this card will let you negate any of these things. If your opponent uh. tries to do it. Well, I don't like that. You don't like that? I don't know if I like I, I see it's bad. <laughs> this is a really good card. I knew it! <laughs> Dash you know! I hate you, the ball! I hate you, Harder! This is one of the best cards in the game currently because a lot of modern Yu-Gi-Oh decks revolve very heavily about doing any of these three things. A lot most Yu-Gi-Oh decks nowadays, because they're archetypes, right? You always have one card that you use to search the deck. Then you'll always have one card that you use to special summon from the deck. So Ash basically lets you negate part of your opponent's combo. <laughs> I'm from Palatown. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ash, Ash is actually a really good card. All right, you ready for number 10? Yes, for Paul. All right, there, there. That's okay. Oh. Number 10. Good. <laughs> <laughs> this is Lightning Vortex. You discard one card, destroy all face-up monsters your opponent controls. I'm <laughs> it's not very good. <laughs> it's all monsters. <laughs> yeah, it destroys all monsters your opponent controls, but you have to discard a card to do it. So it's technically a negative one to your hand. I don't care. There's cards like like- I, I, I have a field wipe right there. I debate, Carl, you don't know shit about this card. This card sounds cool. There's literally a card called Raigeki that does the same thing, but you don't have to discard a card. I'll put it on screen now. I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> that was Lightning Vortex. You ready for number 11? 
It's the time wizard. It's the time wizard. So he's a two drop monster, 500 attack, 400 defense. Once per turn, you can call, uh, toss a coin and call it. If you call it right, you destroy all monsters your opponent controls. If you call it wrong, you destroy as many monsters you control as possible. And if you do, you take damage equal to half the total attack those destroyed monsters had while face up on the field. So, but don't I, but can I use Time Wizard to turn Baby Dragon into Thousand Dragon? With polymerization, yeah. Papa. So basically what he does, you flip a coin, right? If you call the, the, the flip right, he's a board wipe for your opponent. If you call it wrong, he's a board wipe for you and you take damage off your own monsters. But he is my favorite card. Yeah? It's only a coin flip, man. That's 50-50. Yeah? Do you think he's good or do you think he's bad? But I need him for you need Thousand him, Dragon. You need him to make Thousand Dragon, that's right. What do you think? He's the, he's the Time Wizard. <laughs> he's the Time Wizard, Papa! What do you think about Time Wizard? Papa. Yes. Thank you, Papa. Do you want my own opinion? I do, yeah. Can I whisper it to you? Yeah, go ahead. I, I think he's rather good. <laughs> but I'm scared to say it. <laughs> he looks very <laughs> nice. <laughs> You know, very dashy. <laughs> but it sounds really bad in the second of it. So what do you think? Is it good or is it bad? I mean, okay, let's put some context into this, right? Because yeah. I'm rooting for you, okay? Yeah, man. All right? What, yeah. did, what did I show you earlier? This card. Is bad? Is bad. Yeah. And it does more than Time Wizard, right? It destroys your entire, f your, your opponent's entire field and lets you special summon from the deck. So what do you think, Time Wizard? Bad! You're right. Okay. He's a bad card. He's bad. Mostly because of the coin flip. In Yu-Gi-Oh, coin flips aren't really a thing. You don't use coin flips because why would you do that when I could just activate a card like even Lightning Void Vortex is better than Time Wizard because why? it's it's always a guaranteed oh, destroy yeah. your opponent's monsters. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for the 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 fat the final card? Yes. This is number twelve. This is for all the marbles. Okay. All, all the marbles. All the marbles. All the marbles. I'll forgive you. All the Jackson balls. So he here's the thing, yeah? Onesies, right now, Right now, I think you're at like 40%. Yeah. Okay? If you get the next one right, I'll bump you up to like an 80. So nice. You, so I have a passing so, grade. So you'll pass. But if you get it wrong, I'm going to touch your nipple again. Don't. Hard. What? <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Um, Number 12. Max C. Max C. That's not real. This is a two drop monster. It's 500 attack. What, what monster? It's 200 defense. It's a mouse. He's, he's hiding in like the drawers. So his effect. During either player's turn, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard. This turn, each time your opponent special summons a monster or monsters, immediately draw one card and you can only use him once per turn when we think of max c during each e yeah go ahead really really puzzle this one during out. either player's turn yeah you can send this card from your hand to your graveyard mm -hmm. this turn each time your opponent's opponent special summons a monster immediately draw one card yeah you can only use one max c per turn right what do you think about Max C? So what I've learned over this... Yeah, let, let's recap. What have you learned over this whole thing of... This whole Yu-Gi-Oh! Going quiz? down in, a, in hand size is bad. Right. But getting cards is good. That's true. Very good. Getting cards is very good. Normally people play at least two to three monsters per turn, right? Yes, child. <laughs>just keep thinking that. Okay. Yeah. At least two to three. So I can draw up to three cards. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta have this guy in your hand. But I have a three out of 40 chance to get him. Yeah. What do you think? What are you thinking about Max C? Maximum C. But he doesn't seem like he would be strategized to throw in a deck to play around. All right, he's not really part of an archetype. He's no. just a single card. He's just a card. He's just a card. <laughs> I'm scared, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> what are you afraid of? Um, but he is a bug. Oh, maybe he's not a mouse. He's a bug. He's an insect. Yeah. Well, I always thought he was a mouse. I always thought it was a cabinet until you pointed out it was a mouse, and now you always lie to me because it's a bug. <laughs> You're stalling. Make your decision. I, I choose this one. <laughs> the feeling. <laughs> what do you think? <sighs> it's good. Yes. 
You're right. <laughs> like, oh this my is, god. This is arguably one of the best cards in the game. Yes. Because it can shut down your opponent's entire turn from your first turn. So let's say because they don't want to make let you draw cards. Exactly. So what what'll happen, right? Is let's say your opponent gets to go first, okay? Yeah. You have Max C in their hand. Yeah. They go, I'll activate this card, special summon this guy. Response to your activation, activate Max C. They summon their guy, you draw that card. Now all of a sudden they have to decide, do I keep going and let them draw more cards? Or do I just stop and pass my turn? And most of the time they will stop and just pass their turn. Hmm. Yeah, so he can shut down your opponent's entire turn. Wow. One little bug hiding in a drawer. I'm still gonna touch your nipple. No! <laughs> My penis. <laughs> I mean boobs. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I'm not the <a> fake girl. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>